This is State Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm your host, Dave, the Cyber Guy. Thank you for joining us. And if you're like everybody else in almost the entire world, you own one of these devices, a smartphone. And when you're out there trying to find out which smartphone's right for you, which environments, which more secure, I think is the biggest question a lot of us have. How do I keep secure on my mobile device? Which one is right for me? Uh, we need to answer those questions. So that's what today's show is about. Android is one of the most popular operating systems. It's 74% of the market share, and iOS has about 20%. And with me here today, uh, Andrew, the security guy, is going to discuss this with me, and we're going to go over how do we stay safe. Andrew, the security guy, has just one quick piece of advice. None of these devices are safe. <laughs> <laughs> That's about my extent of mobile security advice, but thanks for having me, brother. Well, hey, good Good to have you back, man. Right on. Uh, yeah, none of them are safe. But that's. I mean, safety is an interesting word. So, what do we mean by safe? You're never they're safe. They're safe, they're secure, there's identity, there's where's the person at, finding people, all that kind of stuff. I, I don't think uh, you, you can never be completely safe. Safe. Like, it's going to blow up? Like, you can't not ever be, you can't eliminate all the threats, threats in your life. There's no, no way. There's no. no. All you can do is work to see them coming at you and then maybe mitigate the vulnerabilities associated. Layer. There we go. Layer your defenses. Right? Layer your defenses. Make it so that there's so many layers between you and the, the threat that they choose somebody else. Yeah, I route all my calls through Dave's phone. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, no, Andrew's not here. I can help <laughs> no, just through it. <laughs> just throw it. I get it. You're just using me as a proxy. You're, uh, I'm proxy so that the malware stays on your phone and then I'll just get the call. You know, that's a good idea. I should do that to other we people. We could open that up as a service. <laughs> Dave's phone, the proxy? I, I, well, I, I don't know. They sell That'd everything. Great app. I, I just make a million dollars. I worry I worry about these because it's the, we use iPhone at our office. Uh. Um, we always have, I don't know how they got chosen. Um, and whereas I know like Samsung has product like Knox sort of baked into the hardware. They've got some security baked into that device, which would be an Android operating system on a Samsung phone, for right. example. Um, the iPhone's relying on Apple. You know, we're relying on whatever the technology they baked in for security, which apparently is pretty good because, you know, they're thwarting the FBI. Those guys from, from like someone getting the data that's on the phone, right? These are, what's on your phone? Pictures? What do you got? Your contracts for your will? Or I don't, I don't know what people have on their phone. I'm not going to say it. We're on the air. When you're, pro <laughs> you're already proxy, so yeah. But anyway, the, right, so I mean, the, <laughs> safety, when we talk about safety, that's the things I think about, right? So what's on the device itself that someone could get? There's the getting, owning your device and getting the stuff off it, your contacts maybe or whatever. Then there's the data that might be on it, the, some documents that you have that mm. are valuable. Maybe you know how you can, you can like capture checks and send them to your bank account. Well, I mean, if somebody could hijack that, for example, like maybe they're sending them to their account and they think you think they're going to your account, whatever. There's all that kind of stuff, Take, you know, taking over the picture, the camera, taking over the audio, right? Stealing the conversations. It goes further than that No, though. I mean, yeah. that's, that's on the local device, right? Right, but that's now, what I said, so that's part of it. Every single phone now is connected to some kind of cloud storage. Oh, yeah. And so then especially they get, with the, if you okay. use the iCloud, right, now if you have an iMac or a, a MacBook Pro and okay. you have the iPhone, now if you write a note, it's here, it's on your iMac, and it's on your laptop. Uh, it replicates. It, so if I were able to infect that note on your phone, can I push that infection to those other places? Conceivably, but you'd have to go through the cloud. So if Apple security isn't robust enough, yeah, you can do that. Okay. Yeah. That's an interesting transmission mode. So the, Self the cloud connects all these devices, so you're not secure. And also the, the data that you put on your device at home, uh, nowadays the laptops are coming out with very small hard drives. Yeah. And so you use more cloud storage space, which hooks up to your Android phone or your iPhone. And so you're sharing that space in the cloud. And now if someone hacks your phone, they have access to that, that data. And you oh. might have typed it into your laptop at home, but it's accessible through your mobile device. It's like your Dropbox. It's like your Dropbox, and people gotcha. have access to it. So this mm. insane amount of vulnerabilities out there and multiple vectors to get at you. And let's, let's talk about the options that we have. So I, too, use an iPhone. Um, by the way, Apple, you tricked me. I went in to get a new battery and walked out with a brand new iPhone. And good job, Apple. Yeah, good job, Apple. Talk to me. They're known it. for that. <laughs> Great salespeople. You didn't though. have to wait in line. I did not. I walked right up to the desk, See. and so it was a wonderful experience right up until they took my money. 
And, and today that, you have buyer's remorse. Is that the problem? <laughs> no, I love the device. Really. Too. Oh, you showed your wife, so you have that's a wife yeah, buyer's that, remorse. That, that was a bad part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I showed my wife, and why did you need a new? Good phone? job, Lee. <laughs> so let's talk about Android now. But uh, right. Android uh, is an operating system that shares seventy-four percent of the market share because of two I things. I didn't know that. It's open source, okay. and it can port to multiple hardware vendors. Samsung, LG, Google, you name it. Oh, if it's not Apple, it's Android. Almost all of them. So Nokia still has its Symbian operating system, I think, is still out there, and there are Windows phones. No, trust me, there's really a couple of Windows phones out there. There's a few owners. <laughs> Sorry, I knows. know. It's, there's one or two people. Sorry, that Windows, you know I love you, but not on the phone. <laughs> it just didn't okay. work out well for Windows. But uh, uh, there's some good parts and there's some bad parts, and people should know, um, first of all, uh, the bad parts. As an operating system for an individual user like you and I, just okay. buying on the civilian market, the Android operating system in general is less secure than the iPhone. So you can compare the statistics from last year and the vulnerabilities that, uh, that popped up on the map, and our scanning is becoming better now. So in 2016, we had a good map of how many threats were detected and uh, in indicators of compromise, or IOCs. So in, in the Android world. In the Android. And it's done via, the via all the phone providers and right. that kind of stuff. Okay. So they go out there and they, they survey. Um, there's also a couple, you know, Symantec does this. Sure. Um, and we have some statistics. So in the Android operating system, there were 316 IOCs or threats that were actually in a year. attacks in one year. Versus the iPhone, there was 89. So that's one and a half a day. That's a lot. Versus one every three days. Right. So... You're getting a better deal with the iPhone for well, a security. more secure deal, right? And the and currently the FBI has to hire out to hack into your iPhone. Apparently, apparently, <laughs> but that's a different thing. So, are you? I think you're. Are you talking about those three hundred? You're talking about apps that you downloaded that had malware embedded, or, or just vulnerabilities on the phone that it was susceptible to things. No, that's everything. Oh, so that's total reported blue, vulnerabilities. Blue jacking, blue snarfing. Uh, okay, blue, malware, Bluetooth. Vulnerabilities, right? Wireless Bluetooth protocol vulnerabilities. Everyone's got the WPA2 vulnerability now, right? Right. right? We still so that, that. that one was shared across both platforms, and but still not Windows. Fixed. Not Windows. Well, they because they knew about it ahead of time and got to patch it. But what, I bet they didn't patch their phone OS. You know, it's funny about Windows. Uh, the, the the crack attack we're talking about WPA2. Yeah. They fixed it, I think, by mistake. They implemented the standard uh, more securely than the standard. Nice. Was supposed to be implemented. Maybe they knew something we didn't know. Maybe, but they, they put a couple more steps in there that made them not susceptible to that attack. So mm -hmm. a lot of Windows devices weren't uh, hammered with this attack. As long as they had done their updates, right? As long as they'd done their yeah. updates. Yeah. That was from May or something, I remember. Uh, that's, yeah, yeah, right about there. So, so let's get back let's to Android. Let's talk about Android so, and iOS again. So let's finish, go keep on with okay. Android. Okay, like so this. Android, uh, if you bought a Samsung phone, because it's an open source environment, Samsung writes an Android kernel or the operating system specifically customizes it for that Samsung phone. For their hardware. For that hardware. To optimize it. Right. Okay. Uh, LG's going to do the same, Google's going to do the same, and so forth. And uh, for this show, I'll just pick on those three vendors. <laughs> I don't want to pick on Microsoft too much. But um, when you need an update, you know, you go from uh, the Android jelly bean to the new Oreo, you know, whatever the update is called. You have to wait for Samsung, the manufacturer, to come out with an update for your phone. I mean, is that model specific, potentially? Like if you had a two-year-old phone versus a one you just bought? Okay, I got it could you. Be. So, so some of the older phones, they won't ever yeah, produce an update Because that becomes for a waste of money for them. I got you. Right. And it's also a, uh, uh, what do they call that, um, planned obsolescence? Yeah. So your older phone can't ever get the Oreo update, so it's less secure, but so you go out and buy a new phone. They're usually pretty free anyway on those phones. It seems like when you get an Android phone, they're almost giving them away. Most of the time. But uh, vendors like Samsung can take up to nine months to give you that update. And you, Which, if it was a security vulnerability, now you're waiting this long that's right. to get that update. So okay, potentially, that that's could, a big problem. That could be a big problem, right? Uh, what we don't see is that behavior is not in Google Pixel phones. Is not in there. Not in because well, they Google Pixel phones. They customize their Android for Google Pixels, uh, but that Pixel phone is actually the fastest to give you updates, and it's the most secure. And Google's got a vested interest in this because most of their income comes through advertising, rather than the hardware. So their hardware supports their ad game, whereas Samsung, LG hardware supports itself. 
Mm. So Google's got a vested interest in keeping your device up to date all the time. So they can serve you advertising. Right, right. Which is in maybe ma malware in some people's mind. Could be. <laughs> Could be. I, is it malware many, if it comes from your manufacturer? How many CPU cycles have you given over to freaking looking at the ad that we want you to see because someone's paying us to make you look at it? Anyway. That's an interesting point, right? They give you, say they give you 100 CPU cycles. Let's just demonstrate yeah. this. And uh, that's this year. And two of those cycles are used for advertising. Not even drop in the bucket. But then all of a sudden they go up to 60 cycles of advertising. And you're down to 40% of your, your CPU. For what you want to do. Right. So that's, yeah. that's going to be an impact. So they come out with a better phone. So they give you a thousand. So they can give you more advertising. Right. So now they give you all this more power, but they use a whole bunch more up on advertising. Wow. So you think you're getting a boost, but in reality, you could have got a tremendous boost. But a lot of it maybe Of processing power. Are you Because they sell you that by, isn't it by... I have unlimited. I don't know how people, but there's other people that pay for the well, amount of the data plan. Yeah, they pay for the amount of data they yeah, process. Yeah. So if, if there's advertising data coming you're through there, you're that. paying for that. Right, right. And it's not just about advertising. And right it's not now. free, especially with people like Google. Not people like Google. The companies like Google are all about statistics. Okay. They want data about you. What makes you you? Why are you doing what you do? Why do you shop the way you do? Why do you browse the way you do? And once they identify, do they think markers, I know. I don't think that you know it's all subconscious, so they want to, they're building a subconscious model of like the typical person. Yeah, yeah. You know, not just an Andrew, but... To find out how know. to market to them better. Exactly. It's all about marketing. How much yeah. phone will you buy so we can sell you as much advertising as you'll possibly buy? So we It can... must be working because I bought quite an iPhone and I... <laughs> I, I don't... Google's made a lot of money, so... Google's made a ton of money and they've diversified, which is kind of brilliant. But their, their, their phones, the Pixel is the most secure. Okay. Um, when you go out there and you and read is, this. I'm sorry, is there, is there an Android operating system called Pixel or is it, what does it have, is it like Oreo or has it got some other flavor? Oh, so you're, you're looking at the Google Pixel phone. Pixel phone yep. It's a hardware and then it's the Android operating system. Right. And then there's a variant of Android, which is Oreo. I think that's the just one probably the one that's. But Oreo may not be on the Samsung, or probably they're both running the same version in 2018 or whatever. It could be that they're running both versions. So yeah, older so, phones might but, not but, ever get Oreo, but when Oreo comes out for Samsung, they'll let you know and you can upgrade. I got you. Okay. Right. But it's all up to Samsung. And uh, I don't know much. I just don't know much about Oreo, uh, Android operating. So do they? Um, is security patching and vulnerability a, a big feature of theirs, or are they more about getting more? You know games and more stuff you know you can do with the built-in security into the operating okay. system into the kernel and into the hardware so at several different places like when you're going out to get an application mm -hmm. by an app you go to the google play store and that's my advice you go to some place that's reputable to get your apps to get a download an app right okay. sure if you download for someplace outside of these stores and it downloads to your phone your phone's going to check it for known malware variants they have signatures sure. of What's the stuff look like? And they're going to check it against that okay. stuff. But if it's a zero day, it's on your phone. Now, if you launch that app, your phone again checks. What's this app trying to do? It says it's a web browser. Is it also using these other ports and protocols mm -hmm. that aren't associated with a web browser? If so, it's a security risk. Is it trying to invade some other memory space on your phone? Security risk. It'll mm. shut it down. So Android and iOS both put those features in the operating I system see. and on their hardware. So you know how... Um, Many of the apps, you have to go and tell it to, you can't use my microphone, you can't use my camera, you can't, and then you'll need to, so it'll, then it'll tell you to enable it, and you can turn it on and off. Is that a typical to the Android as it is for the iPhone? Yeah, the same features exist. Okay. Yeah, so, so you can do the same thing. So there, in theory, a good app is supposed to request utilization of other things on the phone, and then you can allow them or deny them. Now, that's the theory. That's now, the apps, theory. Apps have been let in, and we'll discuss this after the break, how apps can actually get onto your phone undetected. And even through Apple's security system, they've gotten onto the system and to the, in here, and Pegasus was one of them that attacked Ouch. the phone last year. So we'll talk about that after the break. Let's okay. go away, pay some bills for about a minute, and we'll come right back. Until then, stay safe. I am Andrea, I am from Italy, and I've been studying and working here in Hawaii for more than three years for my PhD. Hawaii is home to a truly fantastic community of middle and high school students. And did you know some of them are currently out there, right now, using their free time to invent new quantum computers? 
And did you know some of them are exploring cybersecurity and the new frontiers of robotics? I am just always amazed as I talk to them at science fairs. Oh, but there's more. Did you know that these students are coming here on FinTech Hawaii to share their story with us? Come and join the new Young Talents Making Way show and discover how these students are shaping our future. Starting on February the 6th, every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Only here at FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Welcome back to Cyber Underground. I'm Dave, the security guy. Here with me, Andrew, the security guy. Wait. I'm Most Dave. security guys today, brother. Am I Dave the security guy? I'm the You're Dave the, the professor. cyber guy. I'm the professor. Okay. That's what I get I my thought. nicknames all mixed up. I'm forgetting we names. We just have too many shows. <laughs> it's hard to keep it straight. <clears throat> also, we were talking about apps on mobile phones. And, we were. And how you can, as a hacker, hack an app and get it onto a system without uh, the security features being enabled, which is, you know, getting in there under the radar. That's your goal. Uh, uh, last Not yet last year, 2015 and 2014, uh, a Chinese developer used a tool called Xcode, which is the developer tool to create apps for the iPhone. Okay. Right? If you use Xcode and you get a developer license, you, I think it's $99 a year, you pay, Apple checks you out, and you can upload into the uh, App Store for Apple your application and they check it out. Because they used Xcode, they were, Apple, uh, they were able to change Xcode in such a way that when it compiled, their malware wouldn't show up to the security features being checked in the App Store. Ooh. Not only did they do that, that, that same hacker... So they the, intentionally, they created this... Um, they, they, they utilized a flaw they knew would show up when, their, when the code they submitted was scanned. They knew that it would execute but not show this this malware that they essentially invented. using Apple's own tools right right so they took the developer tool and changed that oh so when the developer tool Xcode was modified it actually accepted this new app as okay and applied a signature to it and when it was uploaded to the App Store it passed right through Google sen or uh, Apple sensors oh so it put a signature on it or something yeah right. oh I got so they they just hacked the tool they had locally I thought you meant they hacked like Apple's no tool. no they hacked so a local tool that Apple distributes I now see. not only did That's they do interesting. that they put it up uh, they put it on a few websites for download so if you were a developer and you wanted Xcode and Apple site was a little slow to download that day you can go out there and say oh look it's over here in China, I'll just download it over and here. It's a quick. bad version. It's a bad version, and everything you make, even though you're an honest person, it includes their malware. <laughs> so we that's had, pretty good. There were a dozen or so apps that made it into the App Store. I, rem I remember that, but I don't. I didn't know this background about it. That's how they got through the back door. Wow. So Apple's been taking care of that. Um, but what do they do? All, these actually phone home a lot. They, they, they can phone home. They actually do a that phone to what uh, calls a CNC service or command and control. Okay. That can use your phone as a bot. And you know what the, what the bot is for the Android. You were just talking about it before the show. The biggest bot for the Android right now, if your phone's taken over, what do they want to do with it? Mine cryptocurrency. They mine cryptocurrency with your phone. So that can be one of them. So too. you think Apple's doing that? I don't know if Apple's doing that right now, right? Yeah. No, I don't think so. So this, this last one could uh, actually activate your camera, see where you are, sure. take files, uh, phone home, get statistics from you, uh, steal data, use you to attack other things. Whew. So that's what they embedded. If you used their version of Xcode and you built an app, you're just building an app like an honest right, app developer, right. and you, you put it up there and all of a sudden. So how did, do you know anything about how Apple handled the people that uploaded those Bad versions? You know, that's that's the thing. I don't know what happened to yeah, those people. Yeah, what do people. they do to them? There's not much you can do. It's across international boundaries. And in oh. China, there is no patent law that applies to us. Oh. So if something's over in China, they can pirate the heck out of so it. So Apple can just it. take it off the store. That's all they can really that's do. That's all they can really uh, do. And if you're an honest developer, say, hey, build a, here's the real tool, build, rebuild your thing and send it to us. Which would be a piece of cake if you had the yeah. source code, compile it in the new X code and, and upload then it's it. And then it's clean. Overnight, you're done. Not much work at all. Well, you think it'd be simple to have like a, a parity check. You ought to be able to know you, what your building's not the right size as the thing that... They say they've handled this now. I, they did not announce how they handled it. And that's typical Apple, right? They don't tell you how they're handling well, it. Well, they can't because then you'll hack that. I, exactly. Actually, yeah. that's a pretty good yeah. one, right? Yeah. And you can't tell you how I'm going to win the war, but I'm going to tell you I'm going to win the war. Yeah. Right? I'm not going to tell you wow. I'm going to attack you over here at night. That was know? called, that was Pegasus. I believe that was Pegasus. Was the actual malware. Right. Wow. 
If I'm, yeah, if I'm I right pretty there. much presume they're following me, listening to me, watching me all the time, and I don't know who they are. That's the safest way to live. They had to be bored. Just to be death. a little bit paranoid in the back of your head at all the times. Yeah, right. Someone's listening to me. I, I tell, I, I say this all the time. That this this thing, uh, the lowest tech uh, word you can use for this thing right here is a radio. Yeah, it's, it's a radio. Unencrypted, transmitting data in all directions all the time. Yeah, especially on that cellular bandwidth, right? Right. You don't want to get in here in your text messages and say, uh, "Let's kill him tonight. I'll meet you at seven o'clock and oh. we'll bring the gun." You know, it's it's open. It's in the open. It's un unencrypted and it's transmitting everywhere. Yeah. So just don't do it. And even if you're using like Signal. Uh, no. no, it's <laughs> it's all broken. <laughs> it's all broken. The, the The worst thing is that people think that when they're using an app that uh, includes encryption, that they're completely protected. Encryption yeah. only handles the data in transit yeah. or the data at rest, but not when it's going from at rest to transit. There's a transition that happens. It comes off the hard drive through some channels before it's encrypted and yes. goes to you. If I have put a bad app on here, that can get into that. I'm going to grab that data before it's encrypted and it goes to you. So you right. get an encrypted message, I get the message in the clear. Yeah. That's the best way to get it. And aren't even the cell tower guys like there's a, what's the thing, slingshot or whatever the, you know, aren't there, those guys, the cops are using like false, false towers to, to pull the data no, down. That, no, that's brilliant. That's Stingray. Because they're, they're Stingray, but they're, they're deprecating your protocols, right? right. So that it, strips away all this, the stuff that they don't want to see so that they can see the clear text. And your phone thinks they're part of yeah, the, they think it's on the network. Yeah, so right. it doesn't know. So as long as they stay within range, your phone's going to think, well, that's the easiest channel to get. Yeah. So I'm going to use less power to ta contact that instead of the cell tower up on right. my building. So you talk to them. That's pretty smart. That is really smart. Yeah. I like when the, when the good guys can outsmart some bad guys. Yeah. I like that. I do, too. Uh, you know, whoever invented Stingray, good job, man. That was Her 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 Harris. Harris. Yeah. Okay. Good well guys. done. I like. They've that. always been good guys. So you use iPhone. You've always used iPhone. <sighs> yeah. I mean, I had a thing. I had a Motorola once, years nope. ago. Motorola. Actually, we had blueberries. I had or blackberries. Black <laughs> blueberries. I had blueberries. I love blueberries. I had blackberries uh, back <laughs> quite a while, quite a long time ago. No, that's Maybe did Sprint have them, them, or I don't remember who had them, but um, over all the years, yeah, I think BlackBerry. Then I don't know when I, whenever probably iPhones came out, I got into those at some point. No, no I mean no. I had those old brick phones right? back when we were on real phone. No day, they weren't smartphones. That was the old old days. Yeah, the Nokia's and the yeah, yeah, those. Uh, yeah. I had some of that stuff, but they, they were stupid. <laughs> but the, like these are like intelligent. I mean, I these are pretty amazing. How I many times admit. today do you walk away from this thing? This this is a computer, <laughs> and go on your phone and do something. It's just easier. It is, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, sometimes. And I think I think that part of that security thing leverages that. Yeah. The people are on their mobile all the time. The mobile's easy. And yeah. also, you know, like you, you know how we teach people about for phishing and stuff to read the headers and look, you know, hover over the links with your mouse. Right. right. You, you don't do that on your phone. You don't. You just click stuff. I mean, right. you shouldn't, but you know. Yeah, and you're just as susceptible. In fact, do you run antivirus of any kind on your phone? No. We're, that's what, that's yeah. what I'm saying. We're looking for that now. I'm trying, i got to do something. We like need something. Minimally like VPN, uh, like a VAST or whatever. You know? It used so to be safe. But, yeah. And now it's not that. And, you know, I was going to mention when people do uh, the research about the security of the operating systems, uh, many of them actually, they come out with these uh, pieces of research that you read. Do some research into who's coming out with the research because sometimes they have an agenda. Yeah, I think. Yeah, there's, there's people that want to knock the Android operating system, which is easy to do, by the way. Um, but they have an agenda. They want to knock them out yeah. of the way so they can get their own things done. They're ghostwriting for... It, it could be a lot of things. Other so, fruit companies. Like with anything else, go and check your sources. Your sources, yeah. The yeah. sources are, you know, you don't want someone uh, from Exxon Mobil writing about climate science. I yeah. mean, that's not going to be... Doesn't make really, any sense. Doesn't make any sense at all. Um, actually, you should, uh, you should also uh, download only from an app store. Yeah. You know, Always the original all source. All the original yeah, source. You can't stuff. trust anything else. Don't get somebody's. Uh, there's all these other sites that have distributed software that can download in a blink of an eye. Or that, does Apple even have that? Can you get Apple apps f not from the App Store? I, I don't even know. I would never. You get can it. if you're a developer. You can put non-certified apps on your phone. Oh. But you have to be a developer. Yeah, I'm not that. But that would be a pretty stupid thing. Yeah. To do that. Sounds risky. It, it's it's like uh, finding your favorite program and then saying I'm going to go on the internet and find the free version. Yeah. 
Yeah, Let so, us know how that works out. Just right. give us a call. <laughs> I, yeah, I used to go out and look for free versions all the time when, really? I, was, when I was a kid. Sure, I, I well, loved getting yeah. free games. Not today, But uh, now when you see uh, you know, the EXE for your, your latest Windows game, uh, don't download that unless it's from the source. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, don't. Free. Free. What is free? <laughs> free is f false. Free means come in so we can give you something to take with you that we can make money with while you're getting your little free thing. Right, there's always a hidden piece of something inside yeah. doing something, everyone has an agenda, and the most common agenda right now is uh, botnets. Yeah. They wanna compromise your computer and turn it into what's called a zombie, that they can build a zombie army or a botnet with mm -hmm. and execute attacks sure. or do searches. Or right now, uh, we, we discussed this on the last show, uh, North Korea, known as Hidden Cobra, or mm -hmm. um, there's a couple other names, but uh, Hidden Cobra has Bank shot, which I thought was a really good name. You know, bank mm -hmm. shot when basketball is off the rim, right, or off the off the backboard. Off the glass. And uh, they do multiple proxies to a target. Yeah. So they'll compromise your network, but not let you know about it. They just sit in there with a yeah. little proxy that opens up a front and back door that they can channel data through, right. and you never know. Yeah. And they're not doing any harm to your network, but every time they hop out of your network into the net, next network, your IP address is the one that's associated that's, with that hop. Yeah. That's right. So channeling it back or trying to track back from an attack to the original mm -hmm. it makes it difficult. It's really difficult. And especially if, they're, if they start using mobile networks. Oh, my gosh. That is amazing, yeah. right? And how many things can your phone can connect to? I mean, But how, how much power does it have? It's just odd to me that that's even functional. But, you know, I guess it is. I mean, It's you know, got a lot more power than you might think. Yeah. I mean, these are only maybe a couple of years older in processing power than the computers we use on our desktop right now. Mm -hmm. And... Which it's, means it's equal to the one on my desktop. <laughs> <laughs> it's scarier in that uh, they, these phones also connect to Wi-Fi and cellular networks of several different types. Mm -hmm. And you get 4G, LTE, mm -hmm. uh, CDMA, and then you got Wi-Fi networks, and then you got home network. So it, it and Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. So it just keeps connecting all yeah, over the yeah. place. So you got a lot of exposure to a lot of exposure. networks when you can get onto a mobile node like that with some something that's reaching out. It can reach out. Maybe it makes paths of its own. You don't care. You just want to be masqueraded, right? That's right. If you're North Korea. So I guess we, need, we should do an episode about how to secure the phone that you chose. You and just turn it off. <laughs> actually, completely off. And then throw it in the ocean. Throw it in the ocean. Uh, I think I'll pay mine off first. <laughs> yeah. Before I do that. Well, let's, it would be fun to talk about it if it's really possible. I know a lot of people don't believe it is. Even when it's off, it's got things it's doing. So let's, let's, let's do a good show. That like would fun. be a good show. Uh, I must mention before we go, Android has another feature. It will continuously scan your phone by default uh, for uh, malware. Yeah. Oh, so awesome. it just keeps going and, and looking for things that, uh, as known signature types that are doing things that aren't supposed to be getting done by that particular kind of app. Mm. So that's another feature built into Android. And again, Google is the one that is at the forefront of this. Nice. So if you're going to buy an Android phone, Samsung does have an awesome phone. But Google, actually, the Pixel is a more secure device. and gets go. updated more often. So there's a winner for today. There's a winner. iPhone versus Android. Just go get you a Pixel. I think they're really inexpensive. They're not as expensive as the, the new Samsung. The Samsung the, 8 I think or the 9. I think the Galaxy Note 8 is like 850 or something like ah. that. Yeah, it's, they're expensive. Well, more good news, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's good news and good news. Uh, thanks for joining us. Please come back next week. Uh, we'll have a guest host, and uh, we're talking about some really pertinent stuff again. Until then, stay safe.